Hello and welcome to Pompey Talk, a partnership with Jan Leap. My name is Mark McMahon and join me in the studio today to discuss Pompey's game against Newport is new sports writer Jordan Cross. Hello. Welcome, Jordan. Hello, Mark. What a week it's been. And you'd actually forget there's actually a game on Saturday, <laughs> wouldn't you? It was like the... <laughs> Well, something happened this week. Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. Is that? There's been talk about some, some guy coming to take over Pompey. Oh, thank, thank God for my colleague Neil Allen there, because that, that totally passed me by. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, as you say there, it was actually in Paul Cook's press conference yesterday, it was quite, you know, exactly what you just said. We were, you know, about uh, 15, 20 minutes into the press conference before we even mentioned Newport the County. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was good in itself because um, we were debating how would Paul Cook react to it, uh, the news of Michael Eisner's interest in Pompey, uh, was he going to stonewall it, anything but. Um, as, as you can see from our, from our, from our back page today, um, he, he's willing to um, embrace it. The question, of course, as I wrote in my column this week, or my, my, my first comment piece on the subject is a concern would be the eyes on the prize now of, of, of promotion, how distracting this, this interest could be and, and possibly it being a bad time for it to, to emerge. Paul Cook doesn't see it that way and you can see why in, 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 the, in the event and how it's all unfolded this week, eyes as interest. Um, it's largely, you know, it, it's being embraced as there's some you know, probably cynicism at first mm -hmm. and then some reticence. Uh, which is natural given the past, but as the, as the week's gone on uh, and people have done their due diligence, even a Google search on, on the guy, they've yeah. uh, you know seen that he's the real deal. But you know, every indication is he's, he's the real deal anyway. So uh, Paul Cook can only see that as a positive, and that lending to the upbeat uh, f feeling that's been felt since probably the Crawley game, where that you know we're on our way emerges and there's been that real uplift. Okay, there was a disappointment last weekend, but the reaction of the fans has, has, has lifted Paul there after after the game when he when it was you know at a bit of a low ebb afterwards. Um, and then you can only see this and then really helping to accelerate that feeling over the, over the final eight 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 games. And when you get that uplift, we know at Pompey how, how quickly things can take off and how. You know, and how forceful you know that can be. Mm, you mentioned the fans' reaction to it. Have you been surprised so far? Because there has been a lot of actually logical thinking here that if if Pompey do want to progress, they may have to get a wee bit of investment there. So there's a lot of open minds out there, which we yeah, weren't expecting and, uh, really. Yeah, well, the the thing that I've taken note of is that the, you know a lot of people that work so hard to put Pompey where they are today uh, have looked at this. Um, and they've seen all the, you know, the, the, the fraudsters and such like and convicted fraudsters running the club in the past and, and, and in the succession of, of dodgy owners and, and, and they've looked at this and embraced it. It seems like a, a, a great conclusion for their, their hard work. I mean, you talk about people like Michael Hall and Mick Williams here, you know, who have been running the, the club day to day in the past. So uh, they, they, they're weighing it up and, and they see it as something to embrace. Mark Catlin obviously has been very good with us and, and, and the public he has been speaking and trying to keep Pompey fans abreast of what's happening um, and yeah and it's being viewed well okay there will be some you know as I say sort of questions to be asked and there's, there's not a lot of detail mm -hmm. and, and the devil is in the detail um, and we wait to see you know a lot of questions in terms of the trust and what will their part be moving forward will it be a place on the board will it be a stake in the club uh, you know there's a lot of questions to be answered on that uh, so but you know broadly it's exciting this guy's the real deal, but by all accounts, he's a billionaire. <laughs> he's on the Forbes rich list. Um, so, what's not to embrace? I mean, you know, Paul Cook. I just pick up on on his um, back page today, um, seeing there are some great quotes from, from Paul. Um, this club is going for, forward, and I keep telling people people that it may not be this year or, or next, but in 20 years, then uh, the calibre of this man coming in highlights that no one is going to stop us. Um, he just goes on to talk about, you know, with eight games to go, the, the feel-good factor comes from the supporters. We sit third in the league, four points in front of fourth, and a very influential American wants to take us over and, and to better things. It's about time we had a smile on our face. Yeah, yeah. You can all agree with that, right? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so, so from what you gather and say, information is at a premium, though, you've been quite impressed from what you have read so far of Michael Eisner. Well, yeah, I mean, just, just doing the work that you know, a lot of people do and, and you know, you kind of due diligence, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, the background on the guy, and and then and then obviously you know you speak to people, and, and Neil Allen, our chief sports writer, has been all over the story this week. Um, great contacts, and, and then obviously not you know people like Mark Catlin, you know speaking and, and, and informing us and telling us you know 
what 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 fans want to hear really and uh, and and keeping us informed as best he can obviously there's a uh, uh, kind of you know probably non-disclosure piece, um, agreements in place and yep. bits and bobs like that uh, but we know that we've got the 70 day exclusivity now and and, and people will be looking at each other more closely and, and thrashing their details out of, of, of this deal so um, yeah of course I mean you, you look at the guy when when you looked at oh, I don't know uh, Ali Al Farage and you couldn't and nothing emerges on a, on a Google search you know and then you know People selling leather jackets and uh, the yeah. man from Atlantis, you know, <laughs> and, and when you can't find a great deal about them on, on Google searches, you know, the alarm bells yeah, start, yeah. To, start to ring. That's not the case with this guy. Okay. Well, I know we've touched on it already, but you've said yourself, Paul Cook's actually quite excited about this. Yeah. But is there a possibility that the fans may be distracted by this, that their attention has, has gone off from Newport tomorrow? I don't, I don't really. Uh, it's not really the important factor, is it? It's the players that you want, you want, yeah. you want, you want all concentration on there. Uh, but there's been that kind of. I just think it's going to be an, up, an uplift for, for mm -hmm. the whole thing. It, you know, I think the way it's the way it's played out. Um, of course, the players are like anyone. They're going to be. What's going to be the talk around the club this week? You know, the players at the training ground. We were there yesterday. The staff. Everyone's intrigued and fascinated to see what what's going to happen next. And. Um, so yeah, I mean, eyes, eyes on the prize now. That, as I say, you know, that's the a, a theme that I've picked up on this week from the, from the football point of yeah. view. That that's the be all and end all with eight games to go now. Um, we 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 can't let this slip. But it's in our own hands, uh, and that's uh, with, with you know this time of season. As Paul Cook picks up on our back page tomorrow and at Portsmouth.co.uk, there's going to be you know, 22 teams that would be happy to swap with, with Pompey at the yeah. moment because there's a gap there. Pompey's running, looks decent. You've got more games at home. <laughs> OK, we know what you know, there's been problems at home, but, you know, the, the, the run ins it's all in Pompey's favour. Yeah. And it's there to be had now. OK, well, tomorrow is an important game, particularly mm. on the back of that game against Stevenage, which... Sure. What the, what do you sense from Paul Cook speaking to him at yesterday's press conference? Do you sense it was a blip? Do you sense it's it's going to have an effect on the team or anything like that? No, yeah, and you can't afford to have that. And that, that's been... The thing that you've garnered for, from it that, you know, it really is Paul Cook's sort of just keep going mm -hmm. you know, mantra is, is going to you know, be more relevant here. You know, you've just got to park it, as Paul Cook said. You know, he felt at a low ebb after the game last week, but was roused by the fans. Because there's no time to linger on the on these results now at this yeah. time of season because every game is going to be of in, increasing significance. Season's reaching fever pitch. This is the business end of the campaign where, where it all gets decided. So no time to linger. Um, moving forward now, there'll be talking points. I expect we we'll move on to it about formation and bits and pieces like that. Um, but now that you know, just go and put it put it to put that to bed and go and deliver against Newport County, who are struggling but improving and not going to be um, as easy opponent as, as some people think. Yeah. How big of a factor is it that they're fighting for their lives down at the very bottom? They're not going to come to Fratton Park and play open, expansive football. Nope. They're going to get what they can. And if that's a nil-nil draw with 10 men behind the ball, do you think Pompey are in the position to cope with that yet again at Fratton Park? Oh, oh. Well, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, you're spot on in the assessment at this time of the season. You, when you get to the you know four and five games left, you would probably want teams sort of ensconced in the in the middle of the table with nothing to play for, no, rather than the teams that are, you know with playoff and promotion ambitions and, and relegation. Uh, Newport, they've got the new manager come in, uh, like in a caretaker capacity. He's he's a local lad to to Newport. Uh, the you know popular figure. They've had an upturn in fortunes off the back of that. Uh, although they lost last weekend to Blackpool, they've had a couple of like a point in midweek against Luton. So you know an indication and a couple of wins. Yeah, not going to be an easy game. Um, yeah, what you intimate in there about uh, teams coming and you know parking the bus, if you want to call it that, it's been a problem, hasn't it, for Pompey? Not an easy thing to to contend with. Uh, so I don't think they're going to be the ones that come and have an open, expansive game. So there is that question. Pompey have to answer that. Um, and, it, and it's not going to be, you know, an easy one to overcome. Newport as well. This bizarre stat that they've won the last four visits. I was to say four, yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. Never heard <laughs> of that before until somebody actually yeah. raised them with us today in, in the office. Yeah, so. but that, but they, that, the guys up in uh, our colleagues up in the South Wales Argus have been probably one of their talking points going into the game. Uh, one nil, a two nil, and a three nil. And I know, uh, speaking to my <laughs> colleague. Uh, out there, they said that he's when he spoke to a fan preview in the game, he's predicted a 4 0. <laughs> so, 
yeah, okay, we'll see about that. Um, but the the three wins and then there was a one back in the, there was a big period, but we didn't yeah, play yeah. going back to like the early eighties yeah, and there was a win there. So that's why it, this this you know long period of time um, is covered like you know back, back to when Pompey last beat them at Fratton Park. Um, but we've got to pick up on the stat, right? I mean, the, the, well, the, the, the number of penalties, yeah, yeah it's unbelievable it's when you think about it. Incredible. I mean. Um, Pompey, as we well know, uh, seven of the last eight penalties have been missed. <laughs> Who's on penalties t tomorrow? We don't know. I'll probably go for Cole Baker, actually. Uh, but Newport incredibly have conceded, uh, I think, 19 penalties this season. So you marry those stats together. I'm not quite sure what you conclude from that. Whether there's going to be more penalty wise. Well, there's going to be a and probably going to miss it. Yeah, that's what gets us, yeah, <laughs> the logical conclusion from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the manager, Flynn, said they, they, they've just... Actually, the, the penalties, he can't really, he's not moaning. You know, managers tend to kind of say, you know, we've been hard done by, mm -hmm. um, etc. He's not saying, he's like, oh, no, we've been really reckless. You know, too many reckless challenges, so yeah. we've got to cut it out kind of thing. Um, but we all know about Newport's pitch up at their place. They don't like it as, as much as, as Pompey hated it when they went there. They actually prefer playing away at the moment. So yeah. um, it's going to be a challenge tomorrow. OK, well, what about the formation then? What do you anticipate Pompey doing? Yeah. Obviously, we're anticipating Newport backs against the walls. Does Paul Cook revert back to his 4-2-3-1, which is obviously his favourite? Does he experiment the game with that 3-5-2 that, that obviously yeah. didn't go to plan against Stevenage? Or does he go for simple 4-4-2? Do you reckon that is a thing he's going to be thinking over long and hard between now and kick-off? No, I don't think... I, I think it's done. It'd be four, two, three, one. Yes, like that. Yeah, uh, one hundred percent in my mind. Uh, it was um, a theme he picked up in the press. Who didn't? He was at pains to praise Stevenage and say, "Look, we got battered by them. Fair play, hands up. They were better on the day." But Pompey had um, injuries to key players that probably propelled themselves towards a three-five-two. Um, I know they've been weighing up a little bit over the last few weeks. I think Liam Richardson thinks that they can get to three-five-two. You know, uh, at times um, more than they have, um, but it, it didn't work. Although you can debate whether it was that or the players not turning up at Stevenage, which was mm -hmm. a greater issue. But I think that if those injuries weren't there, Pompey would have stuck with four, two, three, one at Stevenage. Um, the good news is those players are well. We, we hope, and on the way back, they were training this week. Jack Watmore was back. Great news. Curtis Main was back. Oh you know, well done, just Curtis. Curtis <laughs> yeah, we can't say just Curtis Main in the press conference, which has been Paul Paul Cook's sort of uh, yeah. mantra or cliche by now, actually. I um, mean, when we're referring to injuries, um, as people that watch our Facebook live will know. Um, it's a great to see him back. I don't think he's going to be sort of um, near the team anywhere anytime soon, yeah. or ever. Um, but those guys coming back, I think you know certainly you you would expect um, a four two three one tomorrow. Just how important then are Kyle Bennett and Carl Naismith? They've they've sort of come into their own this past few weeks. Yeah, I mean, if you'd have said said that six months ago, you, yeah, you, you wouldn't. Well, you'd be surprised if it came out of your mouth, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, and Paul Cook referenced that again. We were doing the press when Cal Naismith kind of wandered in, and he said, "Oh, you know." You, you went, oh, cow, cow, you know, you wouldn't have thought they'd all be crying, asking keenly for when you're coming back. Yeah. These guys pointing at the press kind of thing and sort of cow cracked a smile. And Benno, who's a character anyway, was like take, taking the mick as well. And uh, it was, yeah, given that, you know, that you can get a lull after defeats, I think the way it has been moved on and put to bed was, was represented at the presser mm -hmm. when there was kind of, yeah, lots of uh, laughs and, and, and sort of a good feeling around the place. So, yeah, I think they'll be back. I think Cal and Aismith in particular, considering, you know, he was on the transfer list and on the way out, you know, in, at the start of the season and last summer, um, for, for him to come back and, and be, a, be a key man um, is, is quite something, really. And, and, and Benno hitting the goal-scoring form as well. But I think they'd be more manipulated of that over the remaining eight games. I don't think, you know, despite his poor form, um, and, and, and I know he'd be frustrated, I think you might see Gary Roberts step up still. Mm -hmm. um, I know probably not a lot of you know, probably in the minority of thinking that, but don't discount that. Um, and you've, got, you've just got players that can come in and impact now, haven't you? Yeah. You've got a squad. Yeah. And, that, and, and that's the key thing now when we haven't had that. We got, you know, we were on our knees when we went into the playoff game against Plymouth last, last season. Last season, yeah, yeah. We haven't got that. We've got options. You've got Cabamba coming off, making his debut yeah. last week. You know, Jamal Lowe's there. There's, there. there's good options. Yeah. Well, one option that Paul Cook is going to have to call on is obviously Tom Davis. Yeah. Uh, with Christian Burgess obviously suspended for this game. Yeah. How big a blow is that for Pompey? Uh, yeah. It, well, I mean, I've kind of answered it in the previous question. It is a blow. Burgess 
in the in the team of the uh, year for the for the division, uh, and and Pompey have got this 18 clean sheets. That Tom Davis looked a bit rusty by all accounts last weekend, mm -hmm. but he have a point to prove, and he should he should be you know hopefully uh, he, he's a good player. He played a lot of football last season for a good team in Accrington, so and he, and he did well earlier in the season as well. So um, yeah, it, you 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 would expect back four as was to be the one you know, first choice but Davis has come in and, and, and he's a more than capable deputy. Okay, get your crystal ball out now. I, yeah. want, your, I want your protection now for the oh, game. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm optimistic. It's a feel good factor. You, but you know Newport what they're going to do. So just just maybe um, maybe just a squeaky 1-0. You, you would take that at us this season. As long as Pompey wins. Just give me three points. Three points, that's all we Shake want. Shake hands, see you later. Okay, yeah. well Jordy, thanks again for all your thoughts. Yeah, cheers. Um, you've been watching Pompey Talk in partnership with Jad Leap. We'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.